And I just I want to thank uh, Governor Lee, by the way, for being here. We will talk about Metro for a little bit, and then I know the governor wants to update the state on the state. And so, and then we'll have questions thereafter. And we have collected here a whole lot of specific area experts. So just to give the, the next session some shape to it. Um, okay. Well, if everybody's here, thanks. Let's get started. Um, good morning. Um, last night was a reminder about how fragile life is, that at any moment an event can show up and make us all too painfully aware of this. This morning's tornado devastated our community. And I want to extend my deepest condolences to the family, friends, and loved ones of our neighbors who we lost as a result of this deadly storm. I had a chance to visit with storm survivors early this morning in the Nashville Farmer's Market, and I was struck by the strength of spirit displayed by our neighbors of all ages, and I also will say their pets. It was great to see their pets with them, giving comfort to each other. Now, as I speak, firefighters and urban search and rescue personnel continue to examine collapsed buildings to ensure, first and foremost, that all residents are accounted for. I want to thank our first responders, utility workers, and metro agency professionals for the incredible work they've done overnight to keep our residents safe and our cities running. And I want to thank our neighboring counties for their offers of help, both for today and, frankly, the weeks to come. And I'd like to remind those of our neighbors who have been displaced by storm damage that we currently have two shelters open and running. In East Nashville, there is the East Magnet High School, and on the west side, the Centennial Sportsplex is up and running. Now, for the many thousands of you who have called, posted, and emailed with generous offers to help, I do have some recommendations. Hands on Nashville is ramping up efforts with community partners and volunteers to begin cleanup efforts throughout our hardest hit neighborhoods. You can sign up to volunteer at hon.org. Now monetary donations, please, the Community Foundation at cfmt.org is equipped to handle financial donations. And then the Community Resource Center is available for donations except for clothing. And all three are worthy community partners and will put your donation and money to good work. Now basically, metro agencies have been working since early this morning to quickly respond to this storm, assess damage citywide, and to begin recovery efforts. Many Nashvillians are without power at this moment. And I urge you to be patient and rest assured that NES is working hard to restore power throughout the city. Now, as damage reports continue to come in, I urge Davidson County residents to stay clear of damaged structures and downed power lines so that emergency crews and officials can do their work and to report a non-emergency cleanup request, which there will be many. Residents can dial 311 from anywhere in Davidson County. And frankly, if you can refrain from driving on our roads today, you will help Metro's cleanup and recovery efforts to go further, faster. Now, my office, it's been, I want to compliment the state and the federal government for their offers of assistance. Nashvillians are known for our resilience, and it's time to show the world once again that we can accomplish a whole lot when we come together as a community and lend each other a helping hand. So if you can avoid traveling today, please do so. Remember our three great community partners to take donations. Do not go into a damaged structure or near a downed power line. That's extremely important. And as we recover from this, we'll be continue to be a great, great city. But it will take a while for people to get power back on to every home in Nashville. Now with that being said, I want to just acknowledge people here from the Metro and then turn this over to the state. We have 
Our fire chief, William Swan, is here, available to answer questions. Chief Anderson of our great police department. Scott Potter from Metro Water. DaCosta Jenkins from NES, who's going to have just a big job in the weeks ahead. Eddie Davidson from Piedmont Natural Gas. Gas leaks are a big concern in a situation like this. Mark Sturdivant, the Director of Public Works, and then Patrick Sheehan, the Director of TEMA, is here. But with this, I'd like to turn this over to the Governor, and then we'll be open to answering questions from you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, let me first say that there's been a real coordinated effort. Um, thanks to the Mayor, thanks to the team in Metro, Nashville, Davidson County, uh, I applaud the efforts of folks that have been up all night long and working to make sure that we have the appropriate response. And we've coordinated that effort with the Tennessee effort, the statewide effort. Um, I have been at the State Res Emergency Response Center. Um, he we're here today at the Metro, right now at the Metro Response Center. So I think the thing that I want to say first is thank you for your efforts and for all of those that are working to make sure that um, folks are safe and that we respond to the tragedy. Secondly, let me just acknowledge tragedy. It is heartbreaking. We have had um, loss of life all across the state. Um, four different counties have, at, as, of, as of this morning, uh, had confirmed fatalities in Benton County, Putnam County, Wilson County, Davidson County nine confirmed fatalities so far. There are a number of people that are missing um, in different areas, many that are injured and being transported. So I encourage all of you to, to, to pray for the families across our state that are facing tragedy right now and that are dealing with heartache and hardship in, in ways that, um, that, that only they know. So our hearts go out to them and our prayers go out to them and for those who are, are supporting and making the efforts to, uh, uh, to support them. So we do, have, we do have nine confirmed fatalities. There are folks uh, missing. We're, we have deployed teams across the state in a search and ref, ref, uh, rescue effort where that's necessary. Um, we do have a very strong coordinated response. Uh, we have ambulances. Um, lined up and, and available in sections where we need them. We've deployed additional state troopers to uh, Wilson County, to Smith County, and beyond. We have, um, we have opened up shelters around the state where necessary. We have been in touch with the White House this morning uh, to assist, to, to ask for assistance federally. We have been in touch with our, um, with our federal delegation uh, senators and congressmen so that they're aware and we are coordinating that effort uh, from a federal standpoint. It's a state of emergency and that allows us to to access additional uh, additional services. So we're, we're doing everything that we can to respond to this. Uh, that being said, it's a very difficult situation and we'll be expanding that response as the day unfolds and we understand even greater what the damages are I'll be, um, I'll be in a helicopter flying over damaged areas across the state later this morning. Uh, and that'll give all of us a better idea of the extent of the damages. That's all being analyzed right now. So I'll just, we'll have a Q&A here to get specific questions. But I think overall I wanted to, to remind folks uh, of the tragedy and, and our need to reach out and support others. Also, to encourage folks that we have a very strong coordinated effort and response here in Tennessee that I'm, I'm very proud of the folks that have been up all night long working to make sure that we, uh, that we accomplish what we need to get accomplished and that we have much to know and much to learn in the hours ahead. And uh, we'll be providing information and input and, and feedback to Tennesseans as we get that information. Um, be mindful of uh, the things that the mayor said, um, not traveling into downtown if you don't need to. And that would hold true in Putnam County and, and other areas of damage. Don't go where the damage is if you don't need to be there. Uh, we have 
emergency personnel that are assisting but then but then do stay aware of how it is that you can volunteer when the time is right to, to surround our citizens and to be there for them when they need it so um, I, I, I thank you for the opportunity I thank you mayor for and many in this room who are um, coordinating the effort we we will stay on it all day long and continue to report back uh, why don't we why don't we have our our personnel from um, emergency response teams come up here and then we'll have uh, we'll do Q&A yeah if the chiefs would come up also and Tima <coughs> thank you so we'll take questions and then um, direct responses to uh, the appropriate person. Does anyone have a question? Right here, Chris. Yes. Right. Hi, Brett Kelman, uh, the Tennessean. Mayor Cooper, Governor Lee, when you guys woke up this morning and all of those many, many cranes in Nashville were, were still standing upright, what was that like? Did you worry about the potential devastation if we'd seen some type of collapse in the storm? Well, you you always worry. We we have a we have got a lot of great codes inspectors here. So they did their job. And you can look at how much was preserved and where the damage happened, it is um, a massive act of nature. You know, and the missing auto zone a building on Rosa Parks. I mean, just go. I hope your paper takes a picture of it and just impresses on people that there was, there was no stop in that. That was just came out of the sky. But again, the fact that cranes didn't fall over. Again, let's just credit. They get a lot of criticism, but let's just credit our our codes folks and our fire inspectors for making sure that 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 went as safely as it did. What was your takeaway talking to people in the shelters? What, what, I, what were they saying? Well, um, it's very inspiring, you know. I mean, they, many of them, in one case, had their th three-year-old child that they grabbed a pack and play and were able just to get out in time. Um, they were calm. They were resilient. They were looking after each other. There was not a lot of conversation, I will say, um, but there was grace because I think they realize how lucky we all are with the fragility of life. But that's my overwhelming feeling was just a, a group of people experiencing grace together. Governor, what kind of assistance are you asking from the White House? And uh, what have you kind of seen in the past? What do you think will get federally and in front of the government? So uh, we, we did speak with the White House this morning. And um, the way this works is when we, have, when we can um, provide information that shows that we have a disaster that qualifies for federal aid, then we begin to submit for that. So they actually have reached out and said, is there anything you need us to do right now, I immediately? And until we have a full assessment, we don't believe that's the case. But what they will be able to help us with is um, assistance down the road. So, And we will apply for that and coordinate those efforts with them. But le let me just say, I was encouraged with the immediate response and the immediate coordination between the federal government and our state in a, a total willingness to help us out. And we'll be walking down that path together with them in the days ahead. When you think about those nine people who lost their lives in this horrible storm, um, first of all, can you shed any light as to how those people <coughs> passed or the, or the circumstances surrounding it? And what is your message to their families? Yeah. Well, personally, Maria and I, um, are praying for every single one of those families and, and not just the families but the communities around them you know that loss tragic sudden loss like that um, can be a powerful um, it can do powerful damage in a community but it can also bring a lot of hope so we're praying we're hopeful that people will surround those families and and there's a really good possibility that there may be more um, because of the number of folks that we know that are missing and haven't been reported and you know it's early and it's it's early yet but a couple things one one we do need to reach out to them but and two we will respond to them uh in ways that that really government can but it's going to take a community to respond to these families and i'm certain their communities their churches their um 
their folks will gather around them, and that's what we know. It happens in this state. We're remarkable people who respond to tragedy and crisis in remarkable ways, and I'm sure that will be the case uh, for those families and, and any others that might um, that might be affected. Did someone maybe from the fire department talk about um, search and rescue efforts last night, or just um, you know going door to door. I know there were a lot of apartment complexes that were impacted with hundreds of people in them, and then also maybe someone from the gas, from Piedmont, about uh, the situation right now and also you know, what was the situation early this morning. Well, I think both the mayor and the governor is, um, um, hit on a couple of points, and that's our urban search and rescue teams. Uh, from the time this event started um, to, to actually currently right now, they're actually making door-to-door -door, uh, uh, community checks uh, along with PD. Uh, we have our um, a, a personnel right now going up in a, to get an aerial view of uh, the devastation. Uh, we will actually map it out from the air and then bring it down back to the EOC, and we will actually then from there deploy more people out to uh, the most dev devastating areas that we see. Uh, but it is a collective effort. We, we know we've got 48 uh, uh, as far as building collapse, uh, and then we have uh, either full collapse or partial collapse. Uh, from the fire department standpoint, uh, we had 30 personnel that was injured. We've made over 400 calls from the time the event started to now. We've transported over 156 personnel. Uh, it's already been stated, unfortunately, we have two fatalities and one severely injured. But again, this will be an ongoing uh, effort uh, as we gather our resources and, and sort of take a, a, a good view of all the damage because, uh, again, once it started, we had people there actually trying to get people out of uh, structures and uh, get them in a fashion, a orderly fashion into a safer zone. And now we're just trying to uh, map it out so that we can actually put more boots on the grounds to uh, make sure that we're taking care of people that we may not even know that's injured or hurt. So, again, everybody's working very hard. We started, our activation started this morning around about 1.45, where we actually pulled in uh, all the uh, uh, infrastructure that we needed, all the teams from, uh, from police to fire, public works and water and NES and, and so many others, that Red Cross uh, and uh, many others, so we can all come together collectively and make decisions as one body to be able to be more in an orderly fashion. So again, I just commend everyone, and like they, uh, the mayor said, and the governor, uh, we're resilient. Uh, people usually come together when something like this happens, so we're just looking for everybody to come come together as one and just to help out your uh, your fellow man. So thank you. To clarify, you said 30 personnel injured. Does that mean people who work for you or people here at Nashville? Uh, these are the, the 30 personnel that we have that are actually uh, injured, these are on the scene injuries that took place. So these from anywhere from people that was aiding and helping, but Remember, the total transport that we made from the, from the calls has been about 156 personnel. We had 400 calls. I mean, from the time, again, it started to now, uh, we're just now level, leveling out where we're back to a more normal status as far as our call volume that's coming in. Uh, but uh, just a lot of, um, when the event happened, you can imagine, uh, we're just overwhelmed with all the calls. Um, and again, I just commend uh, the departments um, with their response and uh, just being on point. The governor said that some people were missing. Can you expand upon how many people we're talking about? Yeah, we don't know that yet. We just, <clears throat> the reports are just coming in and, and Patrick Sheehan may have an update on that, but uh, no, there are, you know, these tornadoes drop down in multiple places across the state. So, uh, and it's, it's still early yet, but there's, debris damage and building damages in places severely, for example, in in Putnam County and um, knowing who is missing and who is not is hard to find out at this point, but that, that information will come as the day progresses. Are there people missing in all four counties currently? Or? You know, I can't answer that. Uh, I just know that the report is that there are there are missing persons across the state, but I didn't get information on which counties have how many folks. Do you have any sense of the dollar amount of damages that we're going to have? From Not at all. Um, it, it's significant. You can see that even in East, even in uh, Germantown, it's significant. But this stretches all the way, you know, from from s the middle of the state, actually from one end of the state to the other. When you consider Benton County to uh, 
uh, to Putnam County and beyond. So there'll be extensive damage, but we don't know how much that'll be yet. A couple more questions. Yeah, so um, this could potentially affect polls. Any, any talk of plans to try to get people out there since you have said don't drive? So downtown. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> downtown. We've actually deployed um, generators to polling stations that are reporting that they don't have um, that they don't have power. So, of course, we want people to to exercise caution in in areas like downtown Nashville where there's where there's damage in the streets and that sort of thing. But we also want folks to to exercise their rights and get out there and vote is a very important day for um, for that. So we're going to make it as as possible, make it make it possible for as many folks as we can to vote. And wherever we find a polling station that there's a problem, we're we're reaching out to correct that. And actually, Chief Swan has a list. I think it's worth going over of the alternative polling places if he would yeah. bring us up to date on how how that's facilitated. Yeah, and Mayor, what we decided to do, the Election Commission is actually putting out uh, alternate uh, places to go vote, and they're doing uh, via the news media, of course, and the social media outlets. So if you just pay a close attention to that, uh, also from the EOC perspective, we'll be putting that list out, because it's, it's a pretty big list, so I will not take the time to, to mention each one of them, but just know they moved the time uh, to 8 o'clock, and uh, there will be a voting today and again they're doing a great job of getting alternates uh, uh, vo uh, voting uh, locations so just pay close attention to that and we'll constantly put that out so uh, we want everybody to, to, to actually be able to well, vote. And to put it in perspective Chief, mm -hmm. I think it's 15 polling locations out of 169 precincts. So the likelihood of voting going on in your precinct as normal is very great. Right is very great. Only less than 10% are affected. What were those two numbers again? One more time, Mayor? So there are 15 polling places that are having an alternative site out of basically 169 precincts. So the likelihood of you being able to vote regularly at your home precinct is very great. But everybody should check and make sure if they are on one of that list of 15. And the Election uh, Commission is facilitating regular voting and I'm sure if you get there up until 6.59 tonight they will keep it up for you. Right. Thank you everyone. Uh, we'll send out those precinct locations uh, to you after we wrap up here. Should we expect any more updates today like this? Uh, uh, not another press conference but we will send updates um, as appropriate. And again I do want to thank the state very much and the governor for being here and we're going to need the state's help and the federal government's help for the assistance to rebuild because that's what's going to happen starting in about two days once NES gets the power back on then on to getting our city rebuilt. Thank you. Think people are going to be without power for two days? No, but some areas clearly will be. Yes. Wouldn't you agree? And actually, DaCosta, if you didn't mind just giving us an update because I know you've got thousands of viewers for whom that's very much upper mind. So thank you, Mayor. First, let me say that our hearts are broken for the city that we service and love, and that we stand by our customers, our neighbors, and our friends, and we will get through this tragedy. In terms of statistics, our initial assessment is there are 50,000 customers out. We've got four major substations out. Now, uh, we were able to restore power to the central substation, which feeds a big part of downtown. We've got about 80 poles out. and. Uh, the 161 kilovolt line that, uh, that's a TVA line that feeds the Hermitage substation is out, and that's one of our major focuses. If we can get that line back up, then that will restore power to most of the people in Hermitage. But it's going to be a massive effort, a massive coordinated effort. Um, we will try to get power on as soon as we can to the people that can accept power. There are going to be some people that won't be able to accept power for a while, but we'll get the power on to the people that can accept it. Patrick, would you, uh, do you have anything to add from a team of perspective and then um, that, that, we've, that we've not said? So the election support, so it's not just Davidson County, so the Secretary of State's office and the governor and uh, our teams have had conversations today about coordinating to make sure that power is available to those polling locations that can take it. And uh, I know that Secretary Hargett's team is working to, with the Attorney General to make sure that 
uh, they can be as flexible as possible with uh, accommodating votes. And I'm not sure how that discussion has gone. I'm sure the Secretary of State's office is preparing remarks about that. But uh, we're all working to make sure that Tennesseans can vote today. It's an incredibly important day for our democracy. And uh, it wasn't the immediate need that we were focused on, but we knew that uh, today it was very important. So, And uh, we do have uh, searches and rescues going on in a number of counties, and that's why we don't have uh, numbers yet, but uh, that will continue to develop. And I, the governor, I think, is right that we will see an increase in the number of fatalities today. So please keep those families in your thoughts and in your prayers, and um, be mindful about ways that you can help. So going into those areas today and tomorrow, probably not the best way, but there'll be people that need donations, and they're reputable organizations uh, that'll be able to help them. So please uh, find ways to contribute like that. I'll, I'll, I'll just add to Mayor's closing comments. Um, it is a very tragic and difficult day in Tennessee, um, but this is where people come together to uh, see redemption in tragedy. And we see that with our emergency personnel all across the state doing exactly what we need to do to respond. I'm very proud of the responses from Metro all the way to these remote counties uh, statewide and even the response from the federal government. Um, as tragic as this is and our hearts are broken, uh, we, we are certain that we'll, we'll surround these folks and uh, we'll do what's necessary and we will take what is a difficult situation as Tennesseans do and make the most of what we can. We, we have great hope for as this day unfolds where it's headed and what the days ahead will be for us through this very difficult um, spot that our state finds itself in, but a uh, very hopeful place as well.